Hello and welcome to the SRC Learning Essentials video series. This video is part of our tips on network and service router security. Today's topic is control processor unit protection. Before we begin, this slide provides a brief overview about the SRC program for those of you who may not be familiar with it. You can learn more by visiting our website at networks.nokia.com src. In the following video, we will explain what is a CPM, discuss what is CPU protection, and how it is used on the Nokia 7750 service router. We will talk about the different types of CPU protection methods and finally we will configure and verify CPU protection in a lab environment. So let's talk about the control plane module or known as the CPM. It is considered the brains of the Nokia 7750 service router and is used to exchange routes to construct a network topology which is referred to as the forwarding information base or FIB. The CPM downloads the FIB to each input-output module, which is then used to perform data forwarding. The CPM also maintains states for multiple internal and external processes. As an example, BGP neighbor states, OSPF adjacency states are all maintained by the CPM. The CPM card has two major functions, CPU to perform computation and memory to hold control plane information. This is why it is very important that the CPM module is protected from attacks, unwanted packets, and unauthorized access that can degrade the performance of the 7750 service writer or even make it unavailable. Okay, so what is CPU protection? CPU protection protects the CPU from denial of service attacks by rate limiting the amount of traffic coming in from an interface, SAP, or SDP and destined to the CPM. It does not distinguish between protocols. It is enabled by default on SAP's SDP and network ports. However, the default parameters can be modified to meet the operator's requirements. Alright, CPU protection is configured as a policy, then applied to a SAP, SDP, or network port. We specify the overall rate in the policy, and traffic received above this rate is dropped. We also specify outer profile rate in the policy and traffic received above this rate is marked as out of profile, which means the traffic is given a lower priority. The Nokia 7750 service router can also rate limit on a per subscriber or MAC address. This would be recommended in a broadband aggregate networks where a large number of DHCP or PPPoE clients exist. As we discussed, CPU protection is a centralized rate limiting function that operates on the CPM card to limit traffic destined to the CPU. Whereas distributed CPU protection or DCP is a rate limiting protection mechanism that operates on the line cards. With distributed CPU protection, both line cards and the CPM card filter control plane traffic. CPM delegates some tasks to the line cards. In distributed CPU protection, there are two types of policers. One is termed as the enforcer policer and the other is called the local monitor. Distributed CPU protection provides protocol granularity per SAP and network interface, whereas CPU protection is not protocol aware. Okay, just like CPU protection, distributed CPU protection is configured using policies and applied to a SAP or network interface. Packets exceeding the rates are dropped or marked as discard eligible. There are two types of policers, static where it is permanently assigned or dynamic where it is only applied after threshold values are reached. As we can see in the slide, when a dynamic policer is applied, a local monitor monitors the overall traffic rate on a SAP. Once that traffic rate exceeds the local monitoring threshold, a dynamic policer is applied to the interface from a pool. The dynamic policer can then rate limit traffic on a per protocol basis. Alright, this is a CPU protection use case. We want to rate limit control traffic to the overall rate of 50 packets per second and mark any control plane packets that exceed 40 packets per second as out of profile. Let's begin the exercise. Okay, let's get started with our CPU protection use case. First thing I want to do is configure a system security CPU protection and I'll do an info. I can see the policies, default policies. I'll create a policy 10, create 
I want to specify my overall rate to 50. I want to specify my outer profile rate to 40. Go back to an info. I can see what I've created. And now I want to apply this to my interface, which is to router R2. Configure router interface to R2. CPU protection, the policy number 10. And now it's been applied. So now we'll go over to router R2. We'll do a ping to 10.10.10.1. I'm going to do rapid count of 80. All right, as we can see, we, our pings are dropping. So it's not conforming to the CPU protection. Now let's go back and have a look at our show show system security CPU protection violators interface and we can see that we have the interface name the policy number the limit first time and last time of violation and the number of violation periods which is which is one in this case in our second use case we want our distributed CPU protection to be dynamic we will have a local monitoring policy that applies a dynamic policy from a pool once the overall control plane traffic has reached 20 packets per second. Once the policy is applied, it will then rate limit DHCP packets to 15 packets per second and ICMP packets to 10 packets per second. Let's begin our exercise. Okay, let's get started with the dynamic distributed CPU protection case. We'll go under configure card 1. FP distribute CPU protection dynamic enforcement police or pool and we can see that we have a pool between 1000 and 32000 we will set the pool to 1000 and we will go configure system security distributed CPU protection and under there we will create a policy and we will name that policy dynamic ICMP and DHCP control okay and we'll create that and once we've got under the policy we will set what our local monitoring policy name will be and we will call this monitor monitor all control traffic and we'll create that and then we'll set the overall monitor control rate to 20 packets within one second so anything that falls with control rate traffic within 20 within one it'll set off the local monitoring we'll set our protocol DHCP create we set our enforcement policy to the local monitoring policy for the dynamic so once the monitoring policy falls within that range we will start using our own dynamic policy for DHCP traffic we will set the dynamic parameters once we're in that context we will set what the rate for this DHCP protocol will be rate packets of 15 within one second and we will set the exceed action to low priority so setting the packets to be a lower priority let's go back and we'll configure the ICMP traffic protocol ICMP create and I'm also going to use the local monitoring policy of monitor all control traffic. Okay. I will set my dynamic parameters to rate the traffic at 10 packets within one second. 
and I will set my exceed action to be discard. So any packets that fall within that rate or above that rate will get discarded. Let's take a look at our overall policy. You can see we created the policy, overall policy of dynamic ICMP DHCP control. We've set the local monitoring policy to any traffic that is in the rate of 20 packets within one second. We need to enforce our local policies for a protocol to for DHCP a rate of 15 within one. It will mark the low priority. For ICMP, it will rate the packets 10 within one, and anything above that rate will be discarded. Okay, let's configure and apply this policy onto the interface facing to R2. Distribute CPU protection, and then the overall policy name of dynamic ICMP and DACP control. All right, let's go to R2, where we will set our ping rate to R1, a rapid count of 500, and we can see that we're the rate is getting slow, and we're dropping packets. Okay, we dropped 66.8 percent packets. Let's go back to our R1 and show router interface to R2 distribute CPU protection and we can see we get some statistics on this for the protocol DHCP we didn't drop anything but uh, for ICMP we exceeded the count of 334 packets and gives us the overall statistics for the ICMP packets Thank you for watching this Nokia video on CPU protection. Content for this video was adapted from the Nokia SRC course, Network and Service Router Security. You can learn more about the complete four-day course and register for it from the SRC website addresses provided here. If you are interested in obtaining an SRC certification, this table identifies the recommended courses and required exams for each of the five available certifications in the program.